So I run a company called Mercury. And second is I wear a hat of um, uh, running certain very powerful board bases that became then part of Mercury. Uh, the third hat I wear is that of um, a company called Sir Team Development India, which works with Dr. Meredith Belbin. Okay, I will try my best. I'm on not on a Wi-Fi. I'm actually on a LAN network. Uh, so I'm trying my best. If there's a serious issue, you text me and I will see how I can adapt. So the hat that I'm going to wear right now is to spend a little time with you on what I consider, in my opinion, in my experience yeah, of working with several companies that uh, very, very Powerful philosophy is Dr. Meredith Belbin's team roles. I want to thank my colleague Jay Shankar, who is a certified specialist coach, to bring this uh, uh, event uh, onto the scene and help me some time to spend. Use uh, you know the videos for bandwidth, or we will use a chat box for interacting. Good. So Belbin for transforming the performance of people and teams. Belvin for transforming the performance of people and teams. All right, so if you look at that, coaches are very special. Coaches make a big impact. Coaches make a big difference. One of the finest books I read on coach is a famous book by John Grisham. And the name of the book is Bleachers. John Grisham normally writes about novels which are related to the field of law, about lawyers. There are a few books of John Grisham which are a bit different. One of them is a lovely book called Bleachers. And Bleachers is an impact to a school team on how, when the coach is spending his last few days of life, they get together in honor of the coach. So, Belvin for coaches. Is Belvin going to make a big difference to coaches? Will it help the coaching community? Let's discover it over the next 30, 40 minutes time. All right. So benefit for coaches. Coaching has several nuances, thanks to me. And I'm going to share that with you. So coaching has several nuances. Just one nuance is, if you look at coaching, you're going to spend time with someone. You're going to engage with someone. You're going to communicate with someone, including listening. You're going to interact with someone to help the other person discover, recognize, improve. The thing we are looking at coach or a nuance of a coaching, in my opinion, is coaching is understanding one's own self and the effect and impact one has on others. Let's put it into two parts. Understanding one's own self. If I'm able to understand myself better, I can actually become a better coach. 10 to 20 second task and I want you to reply on the chat box. How does understanding one's own self makes us a better coach? How does understanding one's own self makes an individual a better coach? Could you just use your thumbs and start sending in some messages for me? Himself. Empathize on Kakao. That's fantastic. Okay. Give me some more. I'd like to hear from some more people. 10, 15 seconds. Yeah, let's hear. Om Prakash says, empathize. Okay, good. What else? Yes, please participate. Fingers on the keyboard available. Overcoming self-beliefs. Self-awareness leads to acceptance. And you brilliant, absolutely. Okay, good, good, right. Overcoming self-belief and doubts. Okay, good one, good one. Right? Anybody else? You can send it to everybody else. Right? Can you repeat the question, please? How does understanding on own self makes us or can make us better coaches? Anybody else? On a few seconds? Yeah. Better coaching presence, Lakshmi. Brilliant. Accepting who we are. Oh, yes. When I understand my own self, I can become more authentic. I can become more honest, as Sunil says. And also, when we understand ourselves, that's brilliant, Suresh, we can understand better. I'll go another dimension. 
which is just beautiful. Mokul talks about providing the others the safe space with confidence. When I understand my own self, one of the beautiful things that happen is, I understand what I can do and what I cannot do. And if I understand what I can do and what I cannot do, and it's true for all of us, we cannot do everything. We don't have to do everything. And if I understand what I can do and what I cannot do, I use my strengths very effectively. I come out very effectively. I come out the very best I can be. And that's the beauty of understanding own self. Therefore, my coaching persona, my coaching presence, my coaching conversation, my coaching impact is far, far more stronger. Let's take the second part. I constantly, if I know what's the effect and impact I have on the other person, it helps me. Because if I can understand the effect and impact on the other person, I can modify my style. I can steer it differently. I can discover something differently. That means it's a dynamic activity where if I understand the effect and the impact I have on the other person, I can adapt, modernize, I can do several things. Therefore, I become a coach which is on the go so very effective. So one interesting nuance of coaching is understanding own self and the effect and impact I have on others. Three things which are the expansion of this nuance. Awareness of what one can do and cannot do, which is true for God. That's why it's a very really dynamic process where if I'm on the flow very effectively, if I'm in the moment very effectively, I have the ability to adapt, I have the ability to modify. If I have the ability to adapt and modify effectively, it means I'm actually not obsessed with what I am. I'm actually obsessed with the impact it's creating and therefore I can adapt very well. So it will never be a big problem. Number two, also it helps us to appreciate the need to build. So second is appreciation of the need to build on the strengths of people. Third one, this is something interesting. I'm going to spend a little time later, but I just want to give a little teaser. A distinct understanding of what exactly is a weakness. The word weakness has several connotations. The weird weakness has several meanings. But when we discover Belvin in a little more detail, this is what happened to me 15, 16 years ago. I understood weakness in a new perspective. I understood weakness in a very, very exciting perspective. And that changed the way I engage with people. That changed the way I work with people. So the third interesting is a distinct understanding of what exactly is a weakness. We'll come back to this very clearly. All right. Ability to engage, behave, communicate appropriately. I think if I look at my own capabilities, strengths, and I have the impact and effect on others, because of my ability to adapt well, my engaging, my behaving, my communicating appropriately in a dynamic way significantly goes up. Therefore, there are several nuances of understanding one's own self and understanding the impact and effect I have on others can make a big difference to you as a coach, to me as a coach in the entire coaching process. Coach helps a coachee set goals, size of reality, generate evaluate options, move forward, take action, and of course, on the other side, the help comes from awareness, self and coaching, a positive chemistry between the two people, current situation and the possible options and scenarios and have a follow through for the chain, for the renewal, for the transformation, for the enhancement, for the improvement to happen. This, of course, you know that. Therefore, looking at this, how can Belbin make a difference? How can understanding and appreciation of Belbin can make a difference? So, when we look at Belbin helps us understand behavior. Belbin is an amazingly powerful concept, which I'm going to spend some time now. Helps us understand behavior. Actually, if you ask me what is behavior, simplest ways is what you say and what you do. In an interesting way, I'm going to make a little powerful statement. This is what Mary told me when I met him 16 years ago and I've been meeting him regularly. Belbin predicts behavior. Of course, like human behavior, like weather, 
it can't predict very, very accurately all the time, but it's substantially more accurately than what we can care to think. Bellbin is a predictor behavior. Based on huge research, based on a phenomenal study, we constantly refine Bellbin over the last 25 years. When something is predicted, we have a better ability to handle it. We have better ability to prepare. We have better ability to work with it. We have better ability to add best of it. So Bellman predicts behavior. What is this powerful Bellman, part one Bellman team goals? Right, here is something interesting. I'm gonna show you some little thing. Uh, I suppose you can see who is this guy, an old guy. And uh, you can see these two guys. I can see two guys as well. I mean, look at the first guy. Uh, you all know that's the great god of cricket. And this is, uh, I guess you can make a guess, he's Brian Lara. Let's say Brian Lara comes to one of you, and uh, so good. And Brian Lara says that, uh, you know, I'm a good cricketer, but not as high as Tendulkar, Sachin. You know, right up there, I'm maybe a little below. Why don't you help me to become a woman? And as a coach, I find out everything is fantastic. They're all almost equal on several things. But there's one thing where there's a clear difference between Sachin Tendulkar and Van Lara. And that is, I'm taking an extreme example, ladies and gentlemen, to illustrate a point of view. Sachin is right-hander. Sachin is right, Brian is left. Therefore, I'm going to tell Brian, Brian, I'm going to give you a 15 days training, 15 days coaching on how, yes, this is not a wise suggestion. Obviously, I mean, we were supposed to know it. Between the two of them, Rafael has always been up in terms of the number of wins. And Rafael Nadal is ambidextrous, can use both hands nicely. And Roger Federer is more right hander. And I don't think they can give advice to Roger. You must start using both the hands very effectively. I'm just taking an extreme point of view to illustrate the right and left is about natural tendencies and preferences. It's not the right is good, left is bad. It's about both being natural tendencies and preferences. So, Dr. Medic Belbin looked at and said, let's understand our own behavior and natural preferences in behavior. Therefore, Belbin is not psychometric. Belbin is behavior. Functional role and the other one is a team role. Functional role keeps changing, is part of growth, is part of development, is part of moving up the ladder, moving up the career. There's another role, which is that's a beautiful discovery of Dr. Mary Belvin after several years of research. Same role as a tendency to behave, contribute, and interrelate with others in a particular way. I mean, you all know the word tendency. Tendency is natural inclination, natural preferences. I'll give a little example. Uh, now I have spent about 42 years, and so I'm, I'm actually 65. I'm talking several years ago, when I was in college, completed college, had a first job, or maybe the second job, doesn't matter. On a Friday evening or a Saturday evening, I go to one of my friends, I will have some fun. It's about almost 6.30, 6.45, and the movie starts at about 7, 7.15 maybe. And the other guy says, the guy one says, come on, let's go. I take my bike, we jump in, and as I'm driving, and I'm asking him, as I'm asking him, hey, is it a bit late for the movie? He says, don't worry, we will check out. If the movie is not good, we'll see another movie you don't get. And if both the movies we can't get, let's have maybe a glass of beer, let's have some good food, don't worry about it. I go to the guy, another friend of mine, and I tell him, hey, let's go for a movie. He looks at me, excuse me, what's the time now? 6.45. What's the day today? Saturday. On a Saturday at 6.45, you get a bright idea to go for a movie. So if you want to go for a movie on Saturday, when do you think you should talk about it? Oh, maybe Wednesday, oh, Thursday latest. Oh, okay, so be clear. All right, next week, I want to see another movie. I'm still the same guy. Again, I think of a movie on the 6.30 on a Saturday evening. Do you think I'll go to the first guy or do you think I'll go to the second guy? Do you think I'll go to the first guy or do you think I'll go to the second guy? Give me a quick answer. Yeah, quickly guys. Do you think I'll go to the first guy or do you think I'll go to the second guy? Ah, first guy, naturally, Ajay. Absolutely. He makes movie going a strategic planning exercise. My God. 
So I prefer to deal with the first guy for movie going. Interestingly, look at the next word of Dr. Meredith Belbins. Meredith's apparently is very powerful. He's just 93. I met him last year. He's still, you know, the, the brilliant man I, I ever seen for so many years. And look at the other word, contribute. Both the people believe they're contributing. I went to guy one and guy two. Everyone thinks he's contributing because I am actually asking for a movie. Probably wants to have some nice time, wants to have some fun. Let's go with him. And after all. So the second guy also contributes. Can you tell me in his mind, how does he think he's contributing? Any one or two text boxes replies, messages of replies. Second guy is also contributing. How does he think he's contributing? In his mind. Yeah, is that one or two answers? Any for the guy, Suresh, Ajay, oh my God. Helping him plan in advance, absolutely. This guy will go all the way for a movie. We'll spend some hundred bucks, a few hundred bucks, and we will get a headache. I'm not going to, I'm not going to allow him to pay 200 bucks and catch a headache and buy a headache. But, I don't think in my mind that the second guy is contributing. I think the first guy is contributing because he tells me what I want to hear. He is different from me. He's not like me. So a tendency to behave, contribute and interrelate with others in a particular way. Interrelating. There are some people walk into an airport, there's a fair amount of crowd. But this guy is looking for some familiar face because he needs someone to talk to even in those 20, 30 minutes are waiting for the flight to be announced. So you'll find one chair which is in between two occupied chairs seat and within a few seconds turns to both sides, hi, hi, because he wants to talk. There's somebody else who walks into that, has a distant look, examines the space, not so much of crowd. He still wants to find that one little tiny place in the corner behind the advertising banner or advertising screen where nobody will disturb me. I don't want to, I don't want to meet anybody. He just goes there, safely, just takes his Kindle or takes his laptop or takes a book. Both are different. They interrelate differently with people. So, functional role. A, a tendency to behave, contribute, and interrelate with others in particular. So that's a team role. So action-oriented team roles, social-oriented team roles, and thinking-oriented team roles. Oh, that's interesting. There are nine team roles, beautifully, all the nine fit into those very nicely. The shaper, the implementer, the complete coordinator, team worker, and the socialist. The plant, the monitor evaluator, the specialist. So we have got 19 roles. Now let's look at each one of them in a little more dimension. So the task and action related team role, the shape of, you can see the symbol, the whip in the hand. So if I were to ask you very quickly, just one example, somebody, what do you think would be the strengths of a shape of with a man with a whip in the hand? Come on, any one of you, just give me some one of answers. Um, you guys can discuss quickly. I'll wait for five seconds, 10 seconds. What are the qualities of a shaper? Anybody? Circus trainer. Oh, interesting. I'll come to the circus trainer a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I'll come to that. Good thinking. Uh, anybody else? One more idea. Anything else? Yeah. Some hmm? Yeah. Ah, okay. One last chance. No, no, no. Energy. Dynamic. Goal oriented, has dictator, oh, oh, line manager. Oh, you are giving a functional name, so it's to that, okay? All line managers need not be like that, but I, I like your statement. I'm going to come back to it quickly. Thank you, Suresh, for that. Uh, Aja dictator, wow, wow. I can imagine you are seeing the dictator in your, you know, in your visual, visual image. Challenging, dynamic, goal oriented, has drive and courage. But everybody has a weakness. Prone to provocation and can be blunt on some people. That's a shape up. You have an implementer. You can see the implementer, you can see the gear systems, the transmission working, repeatedly working the same way. So an implementer is absolutely, if you see here, disciplined, 
organized, efficient, turns ideas into actions. But so process driven can be somewhat inflexible, slow to respond to new possibilities, new ideas and approaches. This has worked all the time. We are following a process. We can't change like that, just like that. Or well, let's not try something new. Complete definition. You can see the beautiful, the beautiful spanner which tightens the beam. And all of you must have some idea. Definitely, you need to tighten the beams properly. And uh, what the thing is one important characteristic. You just want to make sure it fits in well. Can you give one important characteristic when you want to tighten a nut and bolt? Any one of you quickly? I'm just making you think and engage and react. Yes, I think you use a lovely word called quality consistency. I use the word accurate, conscientious, meticulous, perfectionist. Detail, I for detail is a complete finisher. But it's like to worry unduly, case reluctant to delegate. Sometimes you must have seen in your own coaching exercises, somebody who is a great perfectionist. Oh, these guys cannot do it as accurately as I have always done. And sometimes people are a little old like me. We keep saying, oh, in my times, we used to be so good in everything, so accurate in everything. Now these people don't even have an ownership of being accurate. So that's a complete definition. So shaper, implementer, complete definition. Then let's touch the heart a little bit. Resource investigator, the four. An individual represented by a symbol of a four. What comes to mind quickly? I just like to have one answer from somebody. Yeah. Put on your thinking caps. Eight o'clock in the night on a Wednesday. I know it's tough, but yeah. One day. It's phone. Phone indicates what? From you. I'll give you seconds. What does phone indicate? Somebody, somebody quickly. Uh, come on, but easy, not difficult. Somebody's got a phone all the time. What is he good at? Well, character. Thank you, Suresh. Wow, you saved my day. Enthusiastic, communicative, expose opportunities, develops contacts. I'm the guy who can find a friend in somebody. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know whether we can do something in Bangladesh for this market, for this product. Bangladesh? Oh, I think I know somebody in uh, Chittagong. And I can find somebody somewhere. Anywhere for that matter. Or optimistic, easily bored coordinator. If you look at a coordinator, a coordinator involved in joint decision making, consensus decision. If you look at the Western Symphony Orchestra, the guy with the baton, you know, you can see the conductor. Actually, he doesn't face the audience, he faces his own team. Somebody must be thinking, if somebody doesn't have a good, reasonable knowledge of the Western Symphony Orchestra, what is he doing? He's not having an instrument, he's not singing, he's not doing anything, he's just moving his hands up and down. I'm sure things can go on without his moving hands up and down. Not really. See, a coordinator. So sometimes you can say somebody handles a circus. I'm not sure. You could be a shaper, could be a coordinator as well. We don't know at the moment. We'll come back to it later, maybe. Table. Dramatic, sensitive, about friction, maybe indecisive when faced with tough decisions. So, shaper. Implementer, company finisher, resource investigator, coordinator, and the team worker. The last three you have. The first symbol you can see is a, the bulb. I think we all know that. I'm going to ask you this question. Creative, just can think diametrically differently, can think tangentially. Eight out of ten ideas of a plan can be absolutely stupid, but we don't know which eight if we want to listen. I'm a strong plant, my own team role, the first one is a strong plant. Therefore, many times my colleagues struggle to work with me, go, oh God, and he keeps coming out with all ideas. Yesterday evening, they front one for their body. Preoccupied by thoughts and may not be communicative. And the key word is may not be communicative. All right, monitor, evaluator, monitor, evaluator. What words come to your mind? What words come to your mind? Yeah. I want to hear a few, as many as I can. Some words. Doesn't matter. Just, just use your imagination. Monitors, tracks to go, tracks a good one. Okay. Evaluation. What do you require for evaluation, oh, my friend? What is one quality required to evaluate anything? To assess anything. What's quality required? One quality required to assess something. Yeah. Anybody else? One quick one? Yeah. One last. You require data? Can you say that? You require data for evaluation. Use the word detail. Detail is slightly different from data, but yes, you require data. 
the third eye in the center, logical. And oh yes, examiner, quality matter, the data is post evaluation. Yeah, yeah, it can be both ways, we'll come to that later. Logical, analytical, discerning makes decisions based on facts. Here's a quite facts. Appears slow moving, let's try. I always say this if a plant is a paintbrush of a Microsoft, an evaluator is an Excel out of the office suite. Logic, analysis, unbiased. That's you have a specialist, you can see later. For this person, knowledge for the joy of knowledge, it is. The more and more I see, the more and more I learn, I realize how much more I need to learn. The guy wants depth, depth, and he will never say, I've learned it all. Contributes on a narrow friend, dwells on technical. So, he got all the 19 words. But there are some very, very interesting damage. All the words I describe in those 19 rows are behaviors. What you see and what you do. Accuracy, eye for detail, logical, analytical, challenging, outspoken. You can see on behavior. Therefore, well-being is not psychometry, which means any well-being team role profiling is done based on a combination of a set of observers who know me well in workplace. So minimum four, you can go up to six, of course, and they do the observer assessment using a 72-word format, which is amazingly powerful. Beauty, all of us have got all the 19 notes. All about all the night. It's like having breakfast. It's like having breakfast. I'm sure all of you, how many of you? I'm sure many of you must be happy like this. So I just want to hear one or two of you. Maybe Suresh uh, or, or Om Prakash, anyone, Ajay. But hey, what's your favorite dish for breakfast? What's your favorite dish? Could you just send me? And this is a very big secret. Ajay, Suresh, dosa, Om Prakash loves dosa. Okay, good. What about Suresh? Suresh, would you like to? Just for breakfast? Bread. Okay, I like bread. Or somebody who doesn't like bread, bread, how can you eat bread? Come on. Bread with cheese. Wow. Fantastic. Very nice, healthy morning cheese. So, okay. I just took this example. Okay, steak, Ajay. Um, uh, that you can't have it for breakfast. Same for Ajay, same for Prakash. What's yours? Some quick examples. What is he don't like for breakfast? Come on. Oats. Oh. Oats. Oh. Ice cream, I understand it. Dal roti in the morning, no. Chapatis, no. Okay, so that's lovely. But I'm sure some people say that the chapatis is very kind of it's fantastic. So, sir, in simple things like breakfast. So, if, let's say, for example, there is, if Oprakash walks into a buffet and he will find a dosa counter, I think he's, you can see the saliva, you can see that he's enjoying it. Of course, thank God, the sensible guys have a dosa counter here breakfast buffet and somebody says we have 12 different varieties of oats today for breakfast you can choose any one of them combination i'm sure he's going to walk out of that hotel or whatever place before we have our preferred team roles we have our manageable team roles and we have nine team roles self and observer not a personality not psychometry human behavior what you see and what you do all of us have got all the 19 roles and the typical ratio if you use the word the top three are preferred and any questions at any point of time later you can write to me or there should come we'll only be too happy to help you all right now so there are 19 roles so these are not one-off behavior these are repetitive behaviors know about repetitive behavior. You're not smart guys. You can observe somebody's repetitive behavior. You can spot it. You can also spot one of behavior. Normally the boss who doesn't speak much or speaks a lot, one day they meet relation between the two of us. What happened today? It's a bit quiet. Something wrong. So we can spot one of behavior. So we are what we repeatedly do. So what is that It is behavior. All of us have got all the 19 roles. I'm going to go back to this for a moment. I'm going to go back to this for a moment. I'm going to show you something which, which has changed my perspective towards people dramatically in several years. And that is what I have seen. What we think is, if I have something, and if you don't have it, it becomes your weakness. Your example, I am good in data. I'm good in analysis. 
this guy is not good in analysis. That is his weakness. It is his weakness. Therefore, we are constantly in the world at large. We look at the weakness of a person as an absence of the strength that I have. How erroneous it can be. Let's look at this Belvin team look different. Ready? The shaper is challenging, dynamic, goal oriented, has driven courage. But when he is over goal oriented, when he has got an overdrive, he can become provocative and can be blunt to upset people. And implement a disciplined, organized, efficient. But if he becomes too disciplined, he resists any change. A computer finishes accurate, conscientious, meticulous, perfectionist. If he's too conscientious, too meticulous, too perfectionist, oh, he can't delegate because how can they do it so well? And secondly, worry is because for him, a never-ending journey. You can never perfect actually. Even if you're, they're only perfect and imperfect, there's nothing like a 99% perfection. So, the great lesson out of this is an extreme strength is a weakness. And the first word that Dr. Belby Meredith came out, and in fact, I might even ask him, how did you come out with such a wonderful word? We all have it. It's a lot of weakness. And then every strength is likely or possible to have an associated weakness if the strength becomes extreme. Therefore, all of us have got all the 19 roles, preferred, manageable, least preferred, and we may have strength and weakness. And the beauty of well-being based on behavior is there can be shapers who are actually not impatient. That means each well-being team role profile is a unique, distinct profile. A shaper is like, can be impatient, likely to be patient, but you can be an effective shaper without the weakness. Sugar, you can't make badam kheer, you can't make uh, gulab jamun. But the same sugar, if it's gulab jamun is prepared, you won't even notice it. If it's half spoon, no, not really. If it's one spoon, maybe. If it's two spoons, I come on, I can't eat it. So sugar is required for making a sweet, but a little more is okay, just a little more is okay. Little less. So some people have that quarter spoon sugar, some people may have a half, some people may have two. Ben Ben is selfless observers. We are what we repeatedly do. So that's Ben Ben Tibro. Therefore, if you look at Ben Ben, in my perspective, how can we leverage Ben Ben to enhance the coaching process? How does it happen? It's simple. Number one, we can't be all as a coach and as a coachee. We can't be all. And we don't need to be. That's a beauty. Let us utilize our strengths so well. So, when he wrote the first book after the discovery, 1981, Why Management Teams Don't Succeed or Fail by Manit Pelvin, the classic word is, that's simple. We don't have to be everything and we can't be and we don't need to be. It is better to focus on perfecting the strengths rather than overcoming that difficult, non-changeable, almost tough to change weakness, not required. And the weakness is not a crime. It's a weakness. It's allowable. It's not a crime. If I'm a little impatient, yeah, you can help me. But if I keep hitting people, I think it's a flaw. We're not talking a personality flaw. We are talking a normal human being who want to get the best out of themselves. And that's where the coach comes in. That means we have to get the best out of others and of course best out of self as a coach. No one use your strengths, perfect your strengths and compliment. I mean, if you look at the two hands, if you take the two hands, if you want to clasp my hands, I can clasp my hands only because there are gaps between fingers. If you are caught, you know, if the fingers are close to each other on both my hands and I try to connect my hand, I want to clasp my hand, I can't do that. But the moment you open up my hands a little bit, oh, I can see the gaps and one finger of right hand gets into the gap, the, the, the gap of the left finger. So, compliment and let go as needed. It's like a jigsaw. A jigsaw works well because one jigsaw fits into another one where there's a gap. So that's where it's critical. Building awareness in the coach and coaching both that makes a huge impact in building. That means if I understand my building, I understand what I'm good at, 
and I get my the best things in my entire coaching process. In the financial talents he attributes, develop these talents in the coaching conversation, make him discover, make her discover, rather than dwelling on personal shortcoming, which we keep talking all the time. Understanding well-being table, understanding self and the effect and impact I have on others. Plus, understanding the coaching, adapting well, dynamic adaptation. Bellwin is a dynamic language that predicts our human behavior. And human behavior constantly keeps modifying, changing based on which table comes out alive. That is the beauty that a coach can really immensely benefit. All right, what are the seven nuggets of wisdom? You don't have to be everything. That's beautiful. Number two, what others do and you can't do is not a weakness and vice versa. And that opened up a new world of strengths and weaknesses. And exchange strength is a weakness. Therefore, handle it well. Strength shine well when jag dangers are removed. Reduction that makes a difference and not the addition. That's a powerful. And reduction is more difficult. You will wait. Get the best of what you can be and what others can be. Well-being helps us to use this language in a very powerful way. Know what you can't do. Respect and leverage diversity makes a huge step up jump in our coaching perspective, coaching process, coaching skills, coaching conversation, and the mindset of a coach. And the beauty is nobody's perfect. It's allowable. It's not a cry and it's okay. And then I think our whole perspective towards one another, our perspective towards building chemistry, our perspective towards helping co-discover each other, a step up jump in the whole process. So nobody's perfect, we all have the weaknesses. Nobody's perfect, but a team can be, a team can be two, it can be three, it can be four, minimum at least two. That's the famous merit line. And you can have a report between two people, you can have a team report. All things are possible in Melbourne. And my colleague Jay Shankar and I will send you the copies of this report. Just sample to get a little perspective. And the beauty of Melbourne, it is simple. Simple is not easy. Whenever I watch MasterChef Australia, which you keep walking once in a while, it keeps saying all the time, keep it simple, keep it simple. And Melbourne gives a beautiful framework of simplicity, A, predicting human behavior, dynamic interaction of human behavior, getting the best out of people, perfecting one's own, all those strengths and allow the weaknesses. I'm willing to take your questions. If you want to share anything right now, go ahead. And if you want to write to us, it's absolutely fine with your pleasure and we will be a pleasure to engage with you on the mail or any other form as well. Thanks, Ravi. Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, and I'm sure it's... Uh, exciting too you know as we get a little deeper into it you know i'm sure you'll be able to leverage it definitely for coaching um people um, please go ahead and ask questions if anybody has any question yes thank you Aja. I, I can see you can we'll send you the report we'll have a look at it you will get some more powerful insights as well yes uh, thanks so you're right but you know we constantly obsess our weakness as a crime at any point of time, you have any doubts, uh, my email ID is given to you as well. Jay Shankar's email ID is already there. Go ahead and we are, uh, you, you know, we are, we are kind of aficionado of well-being. We believe so strongly it can make a big impact and it's so affable and simple. And for me in life, to get something simple and affable, I think is a great discovery. So thank you very much, all of you, and it's a pleasure. And I'm sorry for a little technical, but I hope we were able to make the best use of it. And um, have a lovely evening. Thank you so much.